We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all united. Hi, everybody. I think, uh, I hope everybody can hear me and uh, welcome, welcome to everybody uh, on site and everybody online. Uh, my name is Martina Dershniak Noirjean, and I'm the Director of uh, International Cooperation at the Office of Consumer Protection, uh, Competition and Consumer Protection in Poland. Um, and uh, welcome to our panel on AI in consumer protection. Um, before, uh, before I will introduce our panelists, who also will have the opportunity to introduce themselves, I will just make a, a quick introduction to the panel, and uh, I will give you also a quick uh, recap of how we are going to, to proceed today in this panel. Um, and, uh, you know, it's three o'clock Friday, uh, and it's the fifth day of the Internet Governance Forum here in Katowice, and uh, we have already had a few few uh, panels on AI, uh, but I believe that uh, our panel here is quite special because we, we have a um, we have a special mission to to focus on uh, AI um, in public administration and consumer protection. Um, but this has been a very interesting event and we have uh, we have had some really interesting opportunities to to learn more and discuss about AI how it's uh, uh, what are the what are the what are the challenges in its implementation in, in different sectors and different uh, fields? Uh, what are the threats? What are the opportunities? What are the regulations and and how it's used? And what is AI in general? How how to how to perceive it? Um, but as I mentioned today uh, in this panel, we want to dis discuss specifically. Um, us, uh, you know, public sector actors and see how how you can help us all the panelists and, and people also in the audience uh, to to um, explore and help us address our challenges, which we'll introduce to you briefly also. Um, we, we I think we can group this kind of issues that we that we are facing into two fields. On one hand, we have a, a kind of technical and practical issues that um, that need to be addressed and, and they concern, uh, you know, data availability, um, data bias and, and all kinds of technological bias issues that um, uh, that concern all the technical aspects of, of using AI tools. Um, but we also have practical issues that concern uh, learning about AI, learning how to using, uh, use it and um, learning ourselves how to work with it, uh, teaching our colleagues and, and the staff working with AI. Um, of course, this is as much an issue in a public sector as it is in a, in a private sector, but nevertheless, we do face those, uh, those, those questions. Uh, on the other hand, we also have uh, ethical and, and legal uh, issues that um, um, that we need to mind, um, you know, the question of what are the current regulations, what are the upcoming regulations, how can we um, help and contribute to this very difficult challenge of, of uh, um, providing new regulations that would effectively uh, help us regulate and, and, and support use of AI. Um, but also at the ethical questions, which, which concern uh, questions such as um, um, bias and 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 our our knowledge of the limitations of AI and and the result it, the results it, it delivers and and how we should interpret them how we should work with them. Um, so we'll try to address all those issues. Um, and before I, I introduce the panelists, I'll just make a brief note and a recap from a Monday's panel, which was also uh, related and similar. Uh, in, concerning a similar topic where I just uh, I will just throw uh, two takeaway points which I have taken from there um, maybe they, they will also help us uh, steer the discussions a little bit um, I have heard that uh, you know using AI and all kinds of new technologies in, in public sector requires us to be a little bit courageous to experiment with this um, to to, to try and be creative and, and innovative, but at the same time to, to, to have a strategy and to, to learn to, to perhaps identify our needs correctly and to 
um, be able to implement it in a smart, smart way. And also, once we have this strategy, we also have to be able to implement it. And and um, and we we also just just last point. We we also um, are not competing with the public sector in the in the way in the with the private sector in the way that we. Um, need to be able to uh, implement it at the same pace as them. Uh, so it's less a, a race with the private sector. It's more about knowing how to do it in a smart way. And today, I hope that we'll be able to explore it, explore it a little bit better with our panelists. Uh, so I'll introduce uh, the panelists first, and they'll be able to say a, a quick uh, quick word for themselves and for how, how they, what's their relation to AI. And uh, next, uh, my colleague uh, Jacek will, will make a short presentation of our experience with, with an AI tool at the, at the Office of Competition and Consumer Protection in Poland. So first of all, I will introduce my, my colleague Jacek, who is the Deputy Director of Bitgoś Branch Office. Thank you, I'm Aton. Thank you, I'm Atoni at Law, and for 10 years I have worked in uh, the Polish competition. Office for Competition and uh, Consumer Protection. And uh, for the past two years, I have also been involved as one of team leaders in a group uh, implementing uh, AI tool uh, for consumer protection in our office. So that's my background in AI. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, we have also online uh, Bob Wouters, who is a project manager of uh, ELAP uh, at the EU uh, European Commission. Hi, Bob. Hi, yes, uh, thank you. Yes, indeed, my name is Bob Wardes. I'm uh, the project manager of EU ELAP, and I started at the commission uh, beginning of this year uh, before I uh, worked at ACM as a digital enforcement official uh, for uh, for four years. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm very, uh, very pleased to join you here on uh, behalf of uh, Team ELAP. Thank you. Great. So Okay, so the next next person I would like to introduce is Professor Monika Namysłowska from uh, Faculty of Law and Administration at the at the University of Łódź. Hi, Monika. <laughs> Hi. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this uh, panel. Uh, my background in the topic of artificial intelligence is an academic one. Uh, I am the principal investigator in a project uh, financed by the National Science Center in Poland entitled Consumer Protection and Artificial Intelligence between Law and Ethics. Uh, but I'm a lawyer <laughs> and uh, for ethical issues, I have an expert uh, in my uh, team. And I am also a local coordinator at, at the University of Łódź of an international didactic project, uh, Tech Law Clinics, and, uh, on legal challenges and implications uh, of digital technologies. And it is supported by Erasmus Plus. And we work together with the Jagiellonian University in Poland, University of Nijmegen in the Netherlands, and uh, Lyon Catholic University in France, and Italian uh, University of uh, Eastern. Piedmont. That's nice. Uh, nice to hear this this uh, really good background in in the topic. Uh, so next we have Time Burden from uh, she's a project manager at the OECD uh, Committee on Consumer uh, Policy and Working Party on Consumer Product Safety. Hi, Time. Hi. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be invited today. Um, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm working at, uh, to support um, the OECD's Committee on Consumer Policy. Um, and uh, we have been uh, for a number of years now contributing to the OECD's um, broader AI work and, and there's certainly a lot going on. Um, notably, uh, we've been contributing uh, to the uh, 2019 uh, OECD recommendation on artificial intelligence, uh, which identifies um, the values uh, that uh, should be um, applied in order to ensure uh, trustworthy uh, AI. Um, and uh, we're also uh, working with our colleagues uh, to ensure that uh, important consumer policy considerations are taking, uh, taken into account in other projects, um, such as a, um, a current business survey uh, on the use of AI by manufacturers, um, as well as the development of a global database on AI incidents, um, recognizing with these projects that um, policymakers really need much more empirical evidence um, in order to um, ensure that uh, policy responses to the, the many challenges that um, AI is presenting are, are based on a solid uh, evidentiary basis. Thanks. 
Thanks, time. And we have also Martin Krasuski. Uh, he's a government affairs and public uh, policy manager at Google. Hi, Martin. Yes, hello. I hope you can hear me. So my name is Marcin Krasowski. I, I work at Google in Warsaw. I deal with various regulatory issues. And one of them is AI. So, you, so I'm approaching AI from the regulatory perspective and from really practical one, because at Google, we have employed uh, AI into our various services and we are happy to share our experiences, how we operate and uh, what have we learned so far. So thank you very much for the invitation. I'm looking forward to discussing with you. So hi everybody again, and uh, last but not least, our um, our colleague from ECC Net Poland, Karol Musz, who's uh, coordinating here the online chat. So feel free to to also speak um, online. He'll be answering. And uh, and uh, hi, Karol. Hi. Nice to meet you again. Okay, so um, as I said, uh, use the chat and, and speak up here in, in the audience. So um, we are all uh, open to questions anytime. Uh, and we'll start now. Jacek, tell us about your AI tool. The AI tool we will start our discussion uh, from is actually under construction, but uh, the topic is uh, very vibrant and uh, I have to give this overview in the beginning to start this, this interesting discussion with our guests. So um, the Office of Competition and Consumer Protection uh, is uh, now working on a tailor-made um, tool based on artificial intelligence that will would help us that find detect and eliminate unfair contract terms uh, in uh, consumer uh, terms and conditions in cons consumer contracts uh, so this is one of our uh, major tasks one of our tasks actually that is pretty much time consuming laborious and uh, in many instances repetitive uh, it works like this, that a officer, usually lawyer with high, higher education, um, is analyzing a complaint from the part of consumer or consumer organizations, is reading uh, tons of, of documents, uh, banking, insurance contracts to find uh, whether uh, some provisions are unfair and should be eliminated uh, um, from um, from such, such contracts yeah, in the uh, in public interest. Uh, we would like to uh, shift, we would like to allocate these talents, our officers to uh, more sophisticated, um, more sophisticated uh, tasks uh, for more re rewarding roles uh, to find uh, these infringements that are more uh, hidden, sophisticated, uh, difficult to find. Uh, and automatize the, as much as it's possible this process of uh, acquiring, collecting uh, the terms and conditions from the market, the standard contracts, such as terms and conditions of VOD, um, platforms of uh, e-commerce marketplaces, of social media uh, portals, uh, but also banking, insurance, uh, telecom uh, contracts. So we would like to acquire them using our uh, our uh ai tool with the use of web crawler it's not actually that much complicated uh, this kind of tools uh works uh in nowadays but uh where is the intelligence intelligence in this um it the tool our new robot friend i would i would call it uh, should also read it analyze it and compare with our know-how our registry of uh, unfair contract terms that has been created through years actually of our work. Uh, it now it includes uh, about eight to 10,000 um, examples of uh, abusive clauses. Uh, and uh, in last months, it has been cleared, annotated and uh, tagged by our officers. Uh, so uh, to make it useful for uh, the artificial intelligence to learn on it. Uh, and the intelligent tool should not only find the same phrases in contracts, but also uh, use uh, NLP techniques to find similar synonymous uh, phrases uh, in uh, consumer uh, contracts. So uh, after such an analysis that uh, should uh, take it a couple of seconds, normally 
perhaps a couple of hours or days. Uh, it should suggest to a human officer uh, which, uh, which provisions seems unfair, seem, seem unfair. Uh, it could mark it in red, for example, whereas those, um, okay, those fair terms and neutral could be marked in, in green. Uh, so it would, this would uh, speed up and enhance our uh, enforcement of uh, consumer law, um, make it possible to uh, allocate these talents uh, of our officers to more rewarding uh, tasks, and also um, make, it, make our surveillance of the market uh, more continuous, more proactive, uh, and uh, the protection of consumer of consumers uh, simply simply better. So this is uh, this is the tool that uh, is uh, actually uh, to be designed and to be implemented by the end of the next year. We have already uh, found uh, chosen uh, a IT company in a public open uh, competition, and we are about to uh, sign a contract. So uh, these are our expectations, and uh, in the uh, following months we will be implementing this project. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jacek. Um, so I, I will start perhaps with, with throwing a, a more general question and I'll ask, uh, ask the question to Monica, um, because you're a researcher and you work a lot with, with AI and uh, um, with, in general with the, with the use of, of new technologies. Um, what, what, what kind of problems, challenges and, and issues do you perceive uh, in that respect uh, in, this, uh, in, in the context of, of public administration using AI and, and this kind of technologies? <clears throat> Thank you for this question. Um, as a researcher, um, I do not focus on strengths, uh, but on risks and shortcomings, and I try to look for uh, solutions. And um, uh, artificial intelligence is used by uh, public administration for uh, various purposes, and among others, to improve, to enhance the uh, protection of uh, consumer interests. Uh, like the tool presented uh, by Jacek um, or the codex system developed by a uh, European University Institute. But uh, paradoxically, uh, this um, significant deployment of AI, deployment they use for consumer protection, uh, also entails uh, risks, uh, even for consumers uh, and for businesses. And in the end, for the public administration uh, itself, in other words, um, it may harm consumers. And I can uh, identify a number of legal issues emerging in connection uh, with the use of artificial intelligence uh, by public administration. Just for example, uh, discriminatory outcomes and uh, non-transparent um, automatic decision making, non-explicable, uh, unfair uh, automatic decision making, also problems with uh, data processing. And um, what is more, the, the, the legal problems arising uh, from the use of artificial intelligence uh, are compounded by um, over or uh, under reliance uh, of uh, public administration staff. Uh, so what are the most important uh, regulations from the perspective of the use uh, of artificial intelligence by uh, the public administration? <clears throat> the existing ones uh, are well known, uh, like the GDPR of course. But in my opinion, the public administration uh, has to focus on the proposed EU regulation on artificial intelligence, so-called Act on Artificial uh, Intelligence. It addresses risks uh, created by uh, artificial intelligence uh, applications. And its uh, basic idea is the risk based uh, approach and it distinguishes uh, minimal risk application, limited risk application uh, <clears throat> applications and uh, high risk AI systems and uh, unacceptable uh, AI, uh, unacceptable risk uh, AI uh, systems. And uh, public administration um, should be very careful if the AI systems, uh, if the applications they use, if they are not uh, high risk. 
uh, AI applications. And uh, there, is, uh, there is a list uh, of uh, high-risk AI system in Annex 3 of the proposed regulation. And uh, the list includes uh, two sections that are very important for public administration. The first one is law enforcement, uh, AI systems, and the second one, administration of justice and democratic processes. Mm, and, and high risk AI system, they will be subjects subject to very strict obligations uh, before they can be put on the market. So um, in my opinion, monitoring the legislative process nowadays is uh, essential. Thank you. Thanks very much. And uh, indeed, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm aware that this is this is what what the colleagues uh, um, who are working with our tool are also aware of. And, and these are precisely the question that we are um, we are also trying to the, the, the challenges that we are also trying to address. Uh, so so I think this kind of um, awareness raising of the AI users, uh, whether it's public or private sector, um, is uh, definitely paying, uh, paying off because, because uh, um, I know that these are issues that, that everybody is aware of. It's more of a question of how can we actually address them uh, while uh, using the, the tools. Um, and this gives us kind of a, a general uh, background, like starting, po starting point uh, with, with, uh, with points that we should pay attention to uh, while working with AI. Um, but let's now move perhaps and, uh, and discuss a little bit. Um, once we are aware of these general underlying issues that, that pertain to AI use, how do we, um, how do we uh, go ahead and identify the processes uh, in uh, organizations, uh, and particularly in um, consumer protection organizations that could be uh, automatized with, with AI? Uh, because that's also uh, that's also quite a difficult um, question um, because there is many many different areas of, of the work of consumer protection agencies that could be automatized. So um, maybe perhaps time uh, could you would you like to address this question? Yeah, thanks. Um, and it's it's a very important question. Um, agencies around the world are, are looking at ways they can use AI because they know it will make them more. Uh, efficient uh, and effective at achieving their mandates. But the question I think is uh, fundamentally where to start. Um, the starting place should of course uh, be uh, in an application that is um, a low risk application uh, to avoid some of the risks that Monica just uh, touched upon. Um, and tasks that I think would be the, the most straightforward candidates uh, would be those that are routine and repetitive and um, Jacek um, touched on, on the, those kinds of tasks a little bit um, when explaining um, the application of, of your new tool uh, in Poland. Um, so a couple of further areas, um, complaints handling, I think would be a, a prime candidate where AI could be um, deployed uh, by, um, by consumer protection authorities. Um, we can have um, AI tools uh, categorizing complaints, identifying areas of concern, whether the inquiry even falls within an agency's mandate or not. And of course, automatically um, allocating the inquiry um, or the complaint to a case officer. Um, we can also be uh, thinking about building in um, AI tools into websites uh, such as chatbots. Uh, these can um, assist consumers uh, with uh, information that is um, personalized uh, general advice, of course, um, but delivered in real time. And that can really be of great assistance. Market surveillance is another key area. Um, and of course, this is the, the area where the, the tool developed um, in Poland is, is going to fall within. Um, but some further, further areas we, we see um, scope for the use of AI would be um, the identification of unsafe products being supplied on online marketplaces. We've already um, heard through our work at the OECD that a number of online marketplaces are actually already deploying tools um, like this to, in their own marketplaces to, to ensure that um, unsafe products are, are not being sold there. Um, further applications would be to, to delect, uh, detect um, uh, misleading advertising, fake online reviews. Of course, we know that this is a real problem. Um, scams um, and even the detection of um, dark patterns, which are uh, designs in, in um, e-commerce websites, which um, uh, would seek to, to deceive uh, consumers and prey on their behavioural biases. An example would be a fake countdown timer, for example. 
ultimately, at the end of the day, though, all these tools uh, have to be uh, accountable to a human being. So they cannot um, be um, existing in isolation. Um, and just finally, um, another area would be, uh, given the, the potential for AI to be used across multiple data sets, um, it can be, um, you know, have great potential to be used to um, transform the way that agencies are gathering insights about what's happening in, in markets more broadly and help them set their agency-wide um, priorities. Thanks. Excellent. Uh I knew that there were many fields where we could uh, apply AI and automatize, but I was not aware there is that many. So, so thanks a lot for this time. It's uh, uh, it's 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 very um, it, it was very interesting. Um, um, I just wanted to, to to say that if anybody of the panelists would like to also jump in to any question, just raise your hand, or or anybody also in the audience uh, here and and online, just 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 raise your hands and and give us a sign. Um, and anybody listening also can think about, and, and later I will ask the question uh, you, could, you could share with us. Um, what, uh, what are your experiences? And perhaps you have similar experiences as us uh, at UOKIC. So, so think about it and, and share with us later. Um, in the meantime, uh, I would like to turn to, uh, to Bob and, and Martin next perhaps, but we'll start with Bob. And I know Bob, you're working a lot with, with this kind, kind of uh, tools uh, at ELAP. Uh, and um, what is interesting for us is also to know uh, what, uh, what technical uh, challenges you perceive, what, which are most uh, perhaps most uh, prominent uh, and, and most difficult and, and uh, um, Share with us your experiences. Uh, what are the most uh, difficult technical issues with with implementation of uh, uh, tools like AI? Yes, uh, thank you. And then, yeah, I think if uh, if we will look if we look at uh, consumer protection uh, within the dig digital single market, um, key elements here are the the level level playing field uh, for the companies um, and consumers uh, protected in an equal way everywhere. Um, and and what we see is um, that that not all uh, national administrations have the same capacity and infrastructure or powers. Um, and with with the EU ELAP, uh, we 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 are aiming for, to 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 deliver a solution that that really helps the national authorities um, to tackle these uh, these uh, misleading or even illegal commercial practices. And um, uh, we, we really um, have been focusing on uh, the, the EU eLab as, a, as an equalizer to, to, to make this um, a more, uh, more of a harmonization. Uh, but that, that came indeed with uh, quite some challenges. Uh, uh, of course, we had, we had uh, challenges already with, um, in, in, in our testing phase that has been uh, all this, this, this year. Um, that you sometimes want to use for uh, third-party tools uh, for AI because there there is uh, there is a lot of good tools available, uh, but but sometimes this is really difficult uh, because of the ownership of the data, where you run into uh, problems uh, or or it's a, it's a, it's a. a a third party uh, company that is um, uh, that is out of the EU that maybe uh, already gives uh, gives some problems so then you then you are starting to look for for um, uh, developing it yourself uh, and I think there there is already um, uh, there is there is already the challenge that that these authorities they they uh, they are now doing the the the, the work um in investigations mostly manually uh but they do uh investigate the practices uh where where AI, ai and also machine learning is used um so you we 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 see a really uh, we see really see a big need for 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 um uh, automation in uh, in consumer protection c um but then again, also, where do you start? Um, and and I think um, uh, it's 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 really good to to also uh, to also a little bit say something about the, the question you asked the uh, time. Um, it's it's good to start uh, also with the enforcement officials to to really see where where is a, really a need for for going into uh, optimization. 
um, and I think also the the, um, the 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 terms and conditional are a very good example. This is this is a lot of manual work. If you can automate something like that, uh, this can help a lot uh, in uh, for for um, the enforcers. But I think it's good to also start there, getting getting the information from them uh, to identify where you can uh, give uh, give a focus on what to do with uh, with AI. Um, and I think when you when you then go into uh, using uh, AI for for better pro uh, uh, enforcement and uh, protection uh, in for consumers, I think you really need to see uh, seek for for an agile approach and really yeah basically um, fail quickly and learn fast. This is uh, this is something uh, it, it takes time to 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 make a good system. But I think that 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 um, the I th the public and administrations can't really afford that they can't afford low quality of evidence. So um, I think I think collaboration uh, really creates here the the added value and and learn from each other what is already being done. Um, so yeah, I think um, that is something uh, uh, that that. Um, yeah, that, uh, that's that's uh, how I see it uh, from from the perspective of uh, the EU eLab. Thanks a lot, Bob. Uh, Martin, what what do you think from your perspective? Um, there is lots of technical issues. Bob has mentioned some of them. Uh, how how do you think it's possible to make those tools more accessible to to public authorities? Well, first of all, thank you for. Uh, for invitation. And uh, I, if I may refer to your previous question, how is it how is it possible to use more of these tools in public administration and what are the challenges? So as Bob rightly pointed out, uh, there is a lack of harmonization of rules across the EU. Uh, because even though one particular member state may, might have very good ideas how to allow new methods of machine learning, artificial intelligence, but maybe something else, um, uh, to use in consumer protection, in uh, their health policy, et cetera, et cetera. But this is not actually reflected in the whole EU. And as Bob pointed out, scale in artificial intelligence, intelligence and in general in uh, tech business matters. So what we need is we need a more scalable approach across the EU, so uh, national consumer protection authorities should uh, harmonize in a way that they release the same data in the same manner, uh, in the same format. Uh, some of them release, release that kind of data on PDF, which is not really readable for all tools. Um, and uh, so these are small things, but this these could mean uh, a lot when it comes to adoption of that kind of, uh, of, that kind of measures. Uh, then what is uh, what we see as well is we see that uh, the EU single market is slowly fragmenting as, for example, for data, uh, we see more and more uh, uh, different requirements of uh, data, data being kept within national borders. Uh, or we see, for example, that the new trade or barriers to, to trade uh, in data are being erected across the Atlantic. And there was a huge uncertainty back ago when GDPR was introduced about uh, data ex exchanges with the US. And this is something that is not really helpful uh, when it comes to training a lot of uh, data models. Uh, therefore, we are really looking forward to, for example, trade and technology council discussions, which are discussions between the EU and the American government on how to create a single space for data exchanges across uh, the Atlantic. And then it all affects uh, fairness, but fairness and all the different biases have already been uh, been mentioned. So I think that there is no point in uh, in addressing this. But then. As a last point, and maybe a bit controversial one, I would like to end on saying that, for example, we in the European Union, we tend to care a lot about consumer protection. For example, recently in our EU legislation, there was an introduction of a face recognition ban. And this is something that we have to uh, understand that this would have 
a cost because in other regions of the world, uh, these consumer protection privacy values are not cherished as in our region. So these other countries and other companies who are present there, they will develop that kind of tools. So in a way, we can end up in a situation that some of our uh, services and tools which are used by private sector or, or by public sector are, are a bit worse because I can easily imagine than, than thanks to this ban, uh, for example, in China, uh, the companies there will have uh, more expertise in that kind of uh, applications. Uh, so, but not saying that, you know, the consumer protection is something bad, obviously not. Uh, but this is, but everything, all uh, legislation comes at a cost for the development of applications and technology. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So on one hand, you, you mentioned some of those, uh, uh, you know, very detailed and nitty gritty technical issues, which which uh, you yourself said are small, but at the same time, uh, I think everybody agrees that they are uh, in a way very fundamental to, to using those tools. On the other hand, you have uh, now just made a really interesting point, which, which is exactly something we, we would like to uh, go to next about you know, it's 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 a new and emerging field, and uh, and uh, Monica uh, has already mentioned some of those uh, ethical and legal issues, uh, and and it is indeed a question that we are need all all need to discuss and explore about uh, how we look at the the ethical and, and and value questions and how we decide to transpose them into legal regulations. So perhaps uh, Jacek, you could tell us now what what uh, what's your perspective on this. Yeah, sure. I'll try to refer shortly to uh, to these uh, issues that was uh, that were raised uh, mostly by by Monica. Uh, well, the first thing is that we are fully aware that uh, to be responsible in uh, using AI, uh, we uh, have to understand it uh, to some extent at least. So perhaps uh, me as lawyer will not. Uh, uh, understand uh, all of the technicalities and uh, these aspects of, of how it works uh, when it comes to the uh, infrastructure. But uh, we uh, gone through some trainings, um, meetings with uh, uh, IT companies and also lawyers and uh, academics experts uh, to uh, analyze all these aspects that you, uh, that you raised. And uh, uh, after that, we decided that this uh, decision-making process um, by the AI uh, tool will not be left alone. We will not let uh, the machine to decide. So um, we decided for a, a supervised uh, machine learning. Uh, so this uh, new system will be our junior worker, our junior employee, I would say, junior colleague uh supervised by a human officer so there there will always be human in the loop uh, a human deciding whether the suggestion recommendation from the part of the computer uh, is uh, correct if not uh, we mark it we reject the suggestion and uh, the system should learn that uh, in the future uh, it should not uh, recommend, uh, should not suggest such a uh, provision is unfair. So this is our control, our supervision over this, and always the last word uh, will be uh, upon the human uh, human officer. So uh, I think this is something that uh, will uh, minimize the um, risk of bias of discrimination uh, to well the same level as if uh, human decided uh, alone let's say let's say yeah so so that's my my answer to this and we are very careful about this so uh, we would i i think this uh, make uh, this process uh, uh, rather low risk and high risk because these are not uh, criminal cases and these are not uh, so the um, the seriousness of, of cases is important here and also uh, the supervision uh, from the part of human uh, employees yeah Thank you. Thanks a lot. And uh, I think uh, I would like to return to time right now because you, you also make a lot of uh, research on this at the OECD. Um, uh, what, what, what's your take on this? What are the other uh, perhaps ethical issues? Uh, mm, we can refer to, to the issues that Monica has mentioned also. And, and how do you think they can, can be tackled by, by, you know, by people like us who are using AI? 
Yeah. First of all, I just want to um, start by saying that ethics is, is critically important and it should always be uh, front of mind uh, when AI systems are being uh, deployed. Um, there are a few, uh, I think, components uh, to the ethical issues and some of which have already been mentioned. I, I won't spend too long going through them all, but um, the first one I think is, is fairness. Um, we need to ensure that AI we're using is, is of course, non-discriminatory. And uh, as we know, um, the AI is only going to be as, as good as the data that we, we feed into it. Uh, so we need to be aware of any uh, biases that are inherent in that data and ensure that they are not perpetuated uh, with our new technology. Uh, we also need to make sure that the AI is accountable, as has been mentioned by a few speakers, we need to have a human behind it at the end of the day. Um, and ultimately, it's the agency that is accountable for its use. Uh, we also need to ensure that it's transparent. I, it's often you know, referred to as a black box AI. People don't really understand it. And, and we need to ensure that the people using it, first and foremost, understand it. And the people uh, who are being affected consumers and businesses by decisions or processes that um, are using AI, that they understand that it's being used and they are able to perhaps uh, to challenge um, any decisions uh, that are made um, adversely um, um, if they wish to do so. Um, we also um, need to ensure that it is robust as well. Uh, digital security is, is a key issue and um, it should also be uh, central to an agency's consideration of whether the how they're going to use AI. And if there is any physical uh, application of the AI, we need to ensure that that application uh, results in a safe outcome. Um, agencies might ultimately consider whether there are certain um, situations where AI shouldn't be used, or if it is used, whether businesses and consumers should have the right to opt out of its use. And um, I think agencies should also... Um, uh, keep front and centre um, the um, existing uh, multilateral efforts uh, to create uh, frameworks, uh, principles to govern um, AI use. And these are all centred around ethics and, and the AI. Um, uh, the OECD um, AI principles um, are very key in that regard. Um, ultimately, I think authorities need to um, remember that um, the, the consequences of, not, of um, ensuring that AI is not used uh, ethically are not only harm to individual uh, consumers and businesses, but also harm to their own reputation at the end of the day. And, and one incident could you know, result in years of hard work in building uh, credibility in an agency um, just you know, being um, undone overnight. Um, this shouldn't um, dissuade agencies from adopting AI. I think it's critical that they do, um, but it should make them extra careful uh, in the way they do so. Yeah, thanks a lot. And I think that's um, also partly, as you mentioned, uh, it concerns, you know, training ourselves and, and making sure we, we take the responsibility for, for using it. So first and foremost, uh, educating ourselves, those who, who decide we will be using that tool, and then making sure that we educate further our colleagues and the em employees, because at the end of the day, uh, I think using those kind of uh, automated tools will be like, uh, you know, uh, some time ago, starting to use the computer and implementing computer at work uh, and, uh, and moving and digitizing the processes. Now we are automating the processes. So it will be a similar, uh, similar uh, learning uh, experience but you know it's it's a much more complex uh, um, uh, much more complex systems that will and technologies that will be implementing now and much more risky so we need to be aware of this and and uh, and training educating and taking responsibility definitely is one um, one aspect that we need to pay attention to um, so what are what are um, what are the other uh, um, issues that we need to pay attention to in order to make AI tools uh, safe and secure and, uh, uh, and to make sure that they are also maintained like this throughout uh, their, their lifetime. Um, uh, maybe, maybe Bob, what, what, what's your take on this? Um, yeah, I think I think the the, the human supervision uh, that that is really uh, really important here and. Um, 
I think uh, the, the the risk uh, in AI uh, lays more in the on the other side of uh, and, and 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 on the the handle on uh, for for conversion and and targeting uh, targeting consumers. Uh, but still, um, uh, however, I think if you if you um, if you use AI from from the enforcement angle, it's um, it's uh, for for me it's very simple it's a, it's a human uh, oversight um, uh, that 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 needs to be in place uh, and i think training and and awareness uh, can be uh, with with the authorities can be uh, can be very uh, beneficial here thanks a lot uh, martin what 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 would you say about this knowing and and you know working with ai and uh, also from this uh, supplier side Yes, uh, thank you. So I would like to disagree slightly on this uh, because I feel that we should not, uh, we should be a bit vary on over reliance on human oversight as a solution to AI uh, issues. Because even though we agree that there should be human oversight, but there are some AI based applications that do not require this. Uh, the, the the ones which are uh, time sensitive or do not operate on very uh, sensitive on delicate matters i think that could be easily left out for ai systems to carry as they uh, as they want uh, and be judged by the by the output without human oversight uh, but when it comes to very important uh, medical for example information then we see uh, that you know human is necessary but if we over rely on human intervention then we might slow some of the ai based processes because please remember that you know ai is supposed to make things faster automatic more uh, automatic and if we require each time to have a human sitting and deciding whether the output is okay or not then we are risking that uh, this whole benefit will will, will not materialize so for me, the most easy, uh, straightforward answer to your question would be the safe AI ecosystem would basically rely on a safe regulatory regime that uh, governs the AI ap uh, applications. So uh, I would summarize this into five points, if I may. So basically a sector approach that builds on existing regulation, then adopt a proportionate and risk-based based framework, three, I would say promote interoperable approach to AI standards and governance for and ensure parity in expectations between non-AI and AI systems so that we do not expect everything at once from the AI system. So the rules should be equal. And five, uh, that we should recognize that the transparency, transparency is a value, but it's not a means to an end. So it has to serve something and not uh, and not be and it itself. And I think that answers my question. Thank you. So, so I think your point, at least for me, makes it a little bit more complicated because uh, your your point was interesting because you mentioned also and you, you you brought our attention to the fact that we should try to understand even more uh, what are the capacities and the limitations of human brain and uh, what are the capacities and limitations of, of AI. So, so this is indeed uh, easy to say, but very difficult to implement, especially given then that uh, there is as many, you know, there is um, uh, AI is a very broad term used for different technologies and, and there is different technology and, and each technology has to be learned and its limitation has to be understood uh, again. So um, so it's a case by case basis that we need to try and understand uh, the, the limitations of both and, and the, the interplay between, you know, human and, and the AI tool. Um, Thanks a lot for that, Martin. I would like to ask if there is anybody uh, who would like to share from the audience uh, their 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 views and their opinions. I think there was uh, Amali here. Amali, would you like to uh, say something? Otherwise, I think uh, I think we can all see the 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 um, the message on the chat that uh, Amali has shared. Uh, thanks a lot. So. Uh, Perhaps I would just throw a last question into the audience uh, and uh, into into the panel into the panelists. Uh, it's it's a little bit more of a specific question. Um, how 
again, addressing the challenges with AI. So how can we prevent uh, AI uh, from, um, and it refers of course to, to what Martin just said and, and to, to what everybody has mentioned and emphasized that we need to have a, a human person behind the AI, but perhaps on a more technical level, what can we do to, to ensure uh, you know, in the design of the tool that um, AI, the, the decisions of the AI will not be biased in any way. Of course, there is many different uh, aspects that the tool can be bi bi biased against, um, but how can we ensure that it's becoming, you know, um, not biased and, and it's not manipulating decisions and, and it's not leading to unfair discrimination? Um, anyone who would like to address anything, otherwise uh, perhaps, um, Time, or would you like to say something about this? I'll just, I'll be quite brief. Um, firstly, I think um, we need to have some uh, some very clear frameworks in place. Uh, I think the organisation should, before they even embark on, on a specific application of AI, they should be thinking about what their AI strategy would be generally. Um, and then uh, taking into account the, the potential um, uh, first applications, they should be developing uh, a framework on how they'll actually, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, ensure that there is an ethical application of that AI. Um, and uh, again, there should be reference uh, made to those um, existing uh, multilateral uh, statements of principle to ensure that we have uh, the important uh, international uh, consistency that we need in this area. Um, I think that that would be the central thing to ensuring the ethical AI I think another thing that we need to also uh, remind ourselves is, is that um, we need to ensure that these tools um, over time continue to meet the needs uh, and priorities of the agency. Uh, as we know, uh, technologies in this area are evolving very quickly. So it's likely that any tool will need to be updated uh, equally quickly. Um, and we also need to, we need to think about um, uh, market responses to the tool. Um, we've already heard uh, in our work at the OECD that uh, from those marketplaces, online marketplaces that have introduced AI tools to um, supervise conduct on their platforms, for example, uh, preventing the listings of unsafe, non-unsafe products. Um, they've already seen, you know, traders understanding that the tool is being used and, you know, um, changing their behaviours, um, changing the the photos they're using, the descriptions they're using um, to, to succeed in relisting these unsafe products that have already been taken down. So we need to be really mindful of that and that the tools will need constant updating and review over time. They shouldn't just be left to operate. Thanks a lot. Uh, Monica, is there something you would like to add perhaps? Um, um, yes, thank you. Um, um, I, I, I think that um, as inspiration uh, to the public administrations, dozens uh, or even hundreds of guidelines uh, may serve, but apart from them, uh, I would like to draw your attention uh, to a document that is now being drafted uh, within an ELI, European Law Institute uh, project. Um, and one project team is preparing model rules uh, which deal with the impact assessment of algorithmic decision making and uh, making systems um, uh, applied used by uh, the public administration and uh, from my pro point of view an uh, extensive impact assessment uh, prior to the deployment of uh, AI system uh, is a very important and interesting exercise to reflect on and to evaluate the potential impact of um, the AI uh, system used uh, by the public um, administration. Thanks very much. Uh, so we are running out of time slowly. And for, for the last part of this panel, I would like um, everybody to make a really uh, a short statement on because we have discussed, uh, we have presented our experience, Jacek has presented uh, our tool, and then we have discussed different challenges, uh, very difficult challenges. So um, I know it's not easy, but if uh, any one of you would like to share as a last statement um, there, kind of most important uh, piece of advice for, for uh, use of AI in public administration. And perhaps I will start with Jacek just to, just to sum up, uh, sum up your, your, your impression from this, from this discussion. Uh, well, I, I will not give any, any answers or any, uh, well, I, I would have to uh, counsel myself. So uh, I will just uh, maybe emphasize that the, we give priority to, to the 
robustness and uh, well low risk let's say actions in in the field of uh, implementing this tool but we can see all of these uh, dangers uh, so that's why we we have chosen this this line of uh, of uh, human supervision uh, also uh, from the point that we are not acting for for, for money we, we don't have to speed up that much we, we ask, act for for mission of, of protecting consumers but also we uh, respect our uh, employees so employing ai doesn't mean necessarily firing people yeah uh, in the same in the same way but but uh, using them or, or uh, inviting them to to other uh, activities. Um, what, what I would like to ask, uh, perhaps I, I didn't mention it, that uh, the next step with, with our uh, mechanism is that it should give a, a brief substantiation, um, for example, refer to uh, some judgments that we have also in our register to, to our previous decisions. This is uh, actually uh, something more complicated, but we have it in our project and we will try to implement it also in um, at some point um, we will test it so it will give uh, some uh, some transparency i would say because i'm aware uh, that there is a separate uh, uh, domain of learning how machine learning uh, acts and i know that's not uh, that easy so uh, i think that uh, this uh, substantiation of uh, of the, the machine decisions will will give some uh, uh, idea why the decision was uh, made and uh, will also uh, make it easier for a human officer uh, to to decide finally so thank you Thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, well, Monica, perhaps what's your what's your statement and what's your one piece of advice for us? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, my my last statement is uh, uh, a simple one, but uh, not easy to apply. I am afraid. And the public administration um, should bear in mind that. Um, uh, um, artificial intelligence systems uh, applications uh, for consumer protection and that they are not uh, magical tools and by all means the public administration must ensure a high degree of uh, reliability and uh, trustworthiness of uh, subsystems and um, I'm convinced that uh, for instance um, an interdisciplinary uh, cooperation uh, may be it will lead to uh, improved consumer protection. And uh, this panel is the best example of such an approach. Thank you. Indeed. Uh, thanks a lot. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a good piece of advice, difficult to implement, but we are working on it. <laughs> uh, Jacek here is, uh, I think, more, conf uh, more confused than, than he was before I am, for sure. But uh, what, what, what about you, Time? What's your advice? Uh, again, I think I just uh, probably borrowing um, words from Monica, but I think trust um, in AI is, is the key, uh, cannot be overstated. Uh, this goes for both uh, the consumers uh, and businesses that will be affected uh, by agency decisions or processes. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, the AI should be explainable and as been, has been said many times, we need to have um, a human in charge. Thanks a lot. Bob, how about you? Yeah, I think I think um, uh, it, it, I think we would we, we we really need to start uh, we ne really need to start doing uh, doing uh, the work with AI and 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 try to uh, really try new things. Um, it uh, it is it is a very hot topic um uh but um but there 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 are a lot of studies uh, of course going on but i think it's really good to just uh, um uh, go experiment and and um um yeah try try a lot fail a lot but uh, but also uh, then you will learn um and i think um uh with with the eu elap we really try to support the national authorities in uh, in a in an uh, uh, to to set up a more collaborative way of of using it and learning from each other um so that is something that i also would really like to 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 embrace uh 
try to cooperate in 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 this uh, in this area um and i think for for it's still we, we try to get evidence out of out of this and if you have the evidence correctly documented it's, it's it doesn't need to be a very scary uh, scary thing uh, that uh, and you can just uh, very well uh, explain things to a judge or uh, or in court if you have it well documented and be trust transparent and and still that human oversight is uh, is very important for checks and balances thanks a lot and and that's indeed a, a very nice initiative you're doing at elap and and uh, your words are also very encouraging because while we i think are mindful of, of the of the issues that monica and time are mentioning we're also uh, i think that's the way to, to try and learn and to implement it so so uh, so we need to learn it along the way and and try to do our best minding those those uh, underlying issues martin now now what's what what would you say what would you recommend be very bold, bold of myself to to just give you one recommendation so like and my company and people who are way above my pay grade they uh they basically came up with seven principles that we have uh, on ai and i'm not going to read to all of you but i just invite all of you to uh to go to ai.google where you can learn them i think they are common sense and they could be easily applicable to a uh, public sector as well ai.google and uh, we'd be happy to engage uh, with uh, with everyone actually to implement these in practice. So uh, please drop me an email, and maybe we can we can cooperate on these in practice. Thank you very much, and thank you once again for organizing this discussion. And thanks everybody. It was really interesting, and I think we have covered all all the topics that we we wanted to cover and we wanted to discuss. And uh, I think it's. Uh, um, we are out of time, but uh, it was it was very fruitful, at least for me. And um, um, and I think that's a, a takeaway for me is that there is uh, there is very important issues that we always have to keep uh, in in the back of our minds. But at the same time, uh, go ahead, be courageous, experiment, and and try to do our best. And we'll learn because we are open to learning. And uh, just wish us good luck, I guess. <laughs> Thanks everybody, and uh, I look forward to seeing you. Uh, uh, in in person soon and thanks a lot for for participating in this panel